So Leslie, um, the exhibition here at the gallery shows your paintings together with a selection of ceramics by Ken Price, who sadly passed away in 2012. You made all the exhibited works during the last year, knowing a selection of works by Price, which would be shown as well. The press release states that this show includes uh, both some of your largest and of your smallest canvases to date. Since it is mentioned in the first paragraph, um, I assume that scale is an important aspect of the work in this exhibition. For Price, the two most powerful sizes are either very small and intimate, what we see here at the gallery, are either very large and heroic. And can you relate to that somehow? Um, and how did you decide on the sizes for this show? Especially from this period of Ken Price's work, it's all, um, I don't want to say modest size because they, some of them feel quite big, but um, his, these sculptures are like a butt, you know, they're all this, <laughs> they're all like within this realm, a very similar scale. But even though they're a similar scale, I do think sculpture always makes you feel aware of your own body. So I wanted my, I didn't want all of my paintings to be this, a similar scale. I felt appropriate when, when hanging with sculpture that, um, that I would, use different scales. So I have like this very small paintings and I have this painting, which is the biggest painting I've made thus far. And scale has a big effect on the paintings. A very large scale I use, it's a more physical, full body uh, movement. And the smaller ones, it's, you know, a more intimate, more precise, kind of more like, you know, looking into a little Joseph Cornell box or something. It's, it's so, and the shapes become bigger also in the bigger paintings, but there are yes. also more shapes. Yes, and I use, you know, I begin with, I use a larger squeegee <laughs> or larger brush <laughs> in the beginning. Although we don't recognize any objects in the shapes, we see their shadows. So they suggest three-dimensional forms, um, creating a trompe and I also have the impression that this trompeau became more and more present and, uh, in your work. Um, but on the other hand, you left photography behind uh, as a starting point. So you moved away maybe from your surroundings or do you still see your paintings as still lifes, uh, as windows to reality or as inspired by your um, direct surroundings? Um, somewhat. I see, I see them... Um, in the same way that like Ken Price is inspired by, you know, landscapes in New Mexico or weird rock formations um, on the beach in Southern California. It's sort of, um, I do think about the beginning of the painting as being grounded in, re in something real. Um, whether that, what that is, is very open-ended. It can be, you know, it can be objects that I hold in my hand in pain. It could be something I saw on a walk in the morning. It could be another painting. Um, it could just be colors that I lay down and spread around um, the canvas. But um, so it, it does, it, it feels grounded in something real. Ken Price described his sculptures as blobs, as if uh, a liquid was being poured or this, as if a moist substance was piled. And there are definitely similarities with your two-dimensional shapes. But I would say yours are rather weightless, dancing in space as if we capture them while they're moving around, playing with each other, hiding, revealing, um, while price the sculptures are more resting and accepting gravity, I think. I am in my work thinking about gravity a lot, circulation, everything, I sort of want to keep everything moving, everything kind of, um, you don't know where things start or where things end. Um, and in Ken Price's sculptures, well, there is the gravity of, uh, you know, sitting. It, they, I do think his work and my work feel suspended in this kind of transformative place. Like, um, you know, I often think when I'm working that you just push like pause and the painting stopped here. It didn't have to stop there. It could have kept, I could have stopped it before or could have stopped it after. Parts of my painting that feel maybe that they were done last were actually done first. Um, but it's that movement that, that, the, that the painting begins from gesture, you know, and like playful um, movement. That's sort of the engine of my work. And I think that's what gives the work movement. Um, and that's what makes it go. And it, with Ken Price, I, I do think it's like he starts with this kind of still clay, these forms made out of clay. And then um, 
the way he paints, which is like many layers of acrylic paint that he then uh, sands off, you feel like the gesture, I think what activates his work is gesture. And it is that feeling of his hand over different parts of the sculpture. And it really, some parts are very fast, you know, where his hand could go <laughs> more quickly. I'm sure he's, you know, doing this on purpose, but it looks like it just was meant to happen that way. But um, so certainly um, that's a connection I feel with his work that where there's an affinity in our work, within our work to do with that kind of the importance of gesture, you know, on something that feels so uh, finished and controlled. In both of your practices, we immediately notice the importance of color. Mm -hmm. uh, the variety of colors in Price's sculptures is immense, like you just said. He created an overall composition, like a pattern skin, without separated fields of color, uh, shades or highlights. And from a distance, they all mix into one. The shapes uh, and the in-between spaces in your work um, or the squeegees, as we would call them. They have different colors, and some parts are more limited to one color, although they, of course, have the shadows. And I have the feeling that they bring more, like, stability in the work, uh, in the composition, and others are, like, more moving, and um, they, they make, actually, like, shapes inside their shape, um, and they express speed. And I, I think there is a similarity between the eventual role of color in, in the work of the both of you, but in your case with painted shadows and in the case of Price with uh, the shadows that is created by, by the three-dimensionality of his work. Maybe the shadow is, I, I, that is what's sculptural by my work, like I, I, that does, it does, the, the, the putting of shadows in certain places like to make areas like push and pull and um, that is, that is something that makes them feel more grounded and real, I suppose. Um, and there's a relationship to sculpture in that way. I, I do think sometimes my paintings look like, you know, paintings representational of something abstract, you know, representation of something abstract. And that's similar to Ken Price's work. Like it is, it feels like it's, it's something real, you know. Although with his work, it just really is that weird thing. It's not a representation of a weird thing. It is a weird thing. And I know he said that, um, you know, he wants it to feel like if you cut his sculpture, it would just be pure color. 